hundreds of dies. But could we say simply that silent inflammation, which is really the greatest killer, actually, is not really talked about as far as actually the consideration of weight loss is concerned. So somebody could be really exercising plenty, eating little, but being fat still. Um, and uh, the reason for that, that is because uh, people have not considered the importance of reducing cortisol, which is a, a um, catabolic hormone, uh, which is uh, released as a result of managing inflammation. So, and then fat cells around the abdomen have four times more receptors for cortisol. And cortisol and these fat receptors um, around the abdomen and core fat in the, around the intestinal tract and subcutaneous fat around the abdomen and water retention all is affected by cortisol having been raised. Um, and people have a hard time getting rid of that, that midsection fat because, and that's what that whole thing, uh, what was a big product that was very popular uh, with the magnolia bark in it? They were advertising all over the country to get to lower your cortisol. So how do how do ladies listening now lower their cortisol level and guys to get rid of that midsection body fat? What are some things they can do? Oh, it's so amazing. It's possible, certainly, to look into some product and things like that. Of course, um, that's the kind of field that I'm in as far as plant-based organics to assist people on this level. Um, it's possible for them to look into things that actually really are the very things that can assist them manage silent inflammation, which a true healing therapeutic, Patrick, really is people having changed their ways for periods of time that allow the body to be able to heal. Um, so one could take a product and assist the person, but it's not a true healing therapeutic because it really is these strange undigestible proteins which create um, inflammation of the mucous membrane uh, and create autoimmune conditions of the intestinal tract. Celiac, uh, it's so amazing that if you're a researcher, it's so incredible how celiac pops up with every single disease. Undigestible proteins. Give us an example of what those are and how they, how they affect the body. It's so amazing, Patrick, because these are proteins that really never were in nature, uh, but plants grew them for us because we selected them. We said, oh, that's a bigger, fatter grain. Uh, let's go with that. That plant grew a storage protein, which is not for itself and its own use at all, but it realized that it had a reproductive um, uh, strategy for being uh, grown uh, if it grew fatter. And so we, of course, our eyes saw that something was fatter and bigger, and we thought, wow, that's for us. But the strange undigestible protein that exists in this is something which is so tightly packed, and fragments of wheat, corn, carrot, beet, banana, dates, um, oats, all the cereals, um, and, of course, seeds are fine, um, you know, seeds are fine. Seeds haven't grown these storage proteins. But we selected things that we've grown in huge fields. And those, um, all of those starches really have undigestible protein fragments. Uh, for our listeners, they could look up gluten. Certainly they've heard of this one. Gliadins and glutenins are two others. Of course, casein is another, which is really the undigestible fragment from a protein from milk. So, so these grains that we are uh, so prolific around the world, the wheat and the corn and, right. and the rice and the oats, these have over the years evolved with undigestible proteins that are actually harmful to the body. And celiac and these kind of gluten intolerance is just a manifestation of that in our culture. Is that right? Yes, it is. It's so amazing, Patrick, that if you looked up every single disease, it's so amazing how celiac pops up in most all of those diseases. Now, if you look at immune compromising conditions and things, it's so amazing how much celiac pops up. Uh, and what is celiac? Well, what's a, a quick explanation, a simple, uh, Dr. Simple, Jeb, or what it is? Yeah. Simple explanation for people listening really is that it's a inflammation of the mucous membrane, and then celiac often occurs long before sort of colitis and uh, diverticulitis and all kinds of Crohn's kinds of conditions and things, which is really more uh, a, a deeper, more primary source of inflammations. 
it, most people might be really unaware, kind of they have celiac, but they can have a little bloated abdomen, a little water retention. They could have a little bit of lip, bottom lip asymmetry, which can show this up just by looking at someone's face. Mm-hmm. But then if you're feeling stuffed a little after eating or you feel like something sort of like uh, blocked or you feel tired or uh, you, you feel like uh, some, uh, something happens to your eyes after eating, that's a typical indication of allergy and typical indication of celiac. Which is a gluten intolerance, which is in a lot of, lot, of, lot of foods. So people get off of this gluten and then they do, they do a lot better, huh? Yeah, they do a lot better. Yeah. Kids do a lot better.